our X crop. My name is Christopher John Francis Boone. I know all the countries of the world and all the capital cities and every prime number up to 7,507. I find people confusing. This is for two main reasons. The first main reason is that people often talk using metaphors. These are examples of metaphors. I am seriously going to lose my rag. He was the apple of her eye. There was a skeleton in the closet. Made a real pig of the day. The dog, stone, set. The word metaphor means carrying something from one place to another, and it is when you describe something by using a word for something that it isn't. This means that the word metaphor is a metaphor. <laughs> the second main reason is that people often talk without using any words. Siobhan says that if you raise one eyebrow, it can mean, I want to do sex with you. <laughs> I never said that. Yes, you did. I didn't use those words, Christopher. You did on September 12th last year at first break. Why have you got a bruise on the side of your face? Bard was angry. He grabbed me and then I hit him. Four, eight, sixteen, thirty two, sixty four. Sorry, I hit you, Christopher. Didn't mean to. I, I love you very much. I'll never forget that. I, I know I lose my rag occasionally. I know I shouldn't, but I only do it because I worry about you. Because I don't want to see you get into trouble. I don't want to see you getting hurt. Stay out of trouble, okay? I'm going to find out who killed Wellington. Were you listening to what I was saying, Christopher? Yes, I was listening to what you were saying. But when someone gets murdered, you have to find out who did it, so that they can be punished. It's a bloody dog, Christopher! A bloody dog! I need a drink. Hi, do you know what happened to Mrs Wellington's dog? Just keep your nose out of other people's business. Hi, do you know what happened to Wellington? Just leave it, for God's sake, Christopher. Hi, did you hear about Mrs Shear's dog? Christopher, I've got to stay out of trouble. Young man. I went to the shop to get some licorice leases and a milky bar. 
You're soaking. Yes. Give me your coat. I'll hang it up. How was school? It was good, thank you. Joseph Lenny took his trousers off and went to the toilet all over the floor of the changing room <laughs> and he started to eat it. But Mr. Oh! Davis stopped him. How oh, good on Mr. Davis, eh? Joseph eats everything. What is this? It's a book I'm writing. Is this true? Did you speak to Mrs. Alexander? Yes. Oh, Jesus, Christopher, what did I tell you? Not to mention his name in this house, <laughs> and not to go asking Mrs. Shears or anyone about who killed that bloody dog, and not to go trespassing on other people's gardens, and to stop this bloody ridiculous detective game, except I haven't done any of those oh, things. Oh, don't give me that rubbish, you little brat. You do exactly what you're bloody doing. What else did I tell you, Christopher? I don't know. Come on. You're the memory man. Let's go around sticking your flipping nose into other people's business. And what do you do? You go around sticking your nose into other people's business. What am I going to do with you, Christopher? What am I going to do with you? I was only chatting, Mrs. Alexander. I, I was asking you one. Thing. Thing. Ah, yes, I didn't want to talk to Mrs. Alexander. Two, four, eight, I need to find my book. When I got home from school, father was still at work. So I went outside and I checked in the dustbin. But the book wasn't there. I wondered if father had put it into his van and driven it to the tip and put it in one of the big bins there. But I did not want that to be true because then I would never see it again. One other possibility was that father had hidden the book somewhere in the house. So I decided to do some detecting and see if I could find it. I started by looking in the kitchen. And then I detected in the utility room. And then I detected in the dining room. And then I detected in the lounge room where I found the missing wheel from my Airfix message mit 109 BF G6 model under the sofa. Then I went upstairs, but I didn't do any detecting in my own room because I reasoned that father wouldn't hide something from me in my own room unless he was being very clever and doing what is called a double bluff like in a real murder mystery novel. So I decided to look only in my own room, only if I couldn't find it anywhere else. Then I detected in the bathroom, but the only place to look in there was the airing cupboard, and there was nothing in there, which meant the only room left to detect in was Father's bedroom. I started by looking under the bed. There were seven shoes, and a comb with lots of hair in it, and a piece of copper pipe, and a chocolate biscuit, and a men's magazine, <laughs> and a Homer Simpson pattern tie, and a wooden spoon. But not my book. Then I detected in the clothes, in the, in the drawers on either side of his dressing table, that these only contained aspirin, nail clippers, tissues, batteries, tampon, dental floss, and a spare false tooth. But my book wasn't there either. Then I checked in the cupboard. <laughs> in the bottom of the cupboard was a large plastic toolbox which was full of tools for doing it yourself. But I could see these without opening the box because it was made of transparent grey plastic. Then I noticed there was another box underneath the toolbox. <laughs> this box was an old cardboard box that is called a shirt box because people used to buy shirts in them. <laughs> and then when I opened the shirt box, I found my book was inside. Then I heard Father's van pulling up outside the house and I knew I had to think fast and be clever. I heard Father shutting the door of the van. And that was when I saw the envelope. It was an envelope addressed to me, and it said, Christopher Boone, 36 Randolph Street, Swindon, Wiltshire. And then I noticed how the words Christopher and Swindon were written. They were written like this. Christopher, Swindon. <laughs> I know three people who do little circles instead of dots over the letter I. And one of them is Siobhan. And one of them is Mr. Loxley, who used to teach me at the school. And one of them was Mother. Christopher. Christopher! Hello? What you found to the town tonight? Baked beans and broccoli. Okay, that could be easily arranged. I'm just going to put some shelves up in the living room, if that's alright with you. It's going to make a bit of a racket, I'm afraid. So if you're going to want to watch television, we're going to have to shift it upstairs. I'll go be in my room. Good man. I went up the stairs, and when I went into my room, I shut the door, and I closed the door. I took out the envelope. Inside, there was a letter. 
Lots of love, your mum. I was really confused. When I started writing my book, there was only one mystery to solve, and now there were two. Perhaps it was the envelope was in the wrong letter, and perhaps it wasn't written from mother. Perhaps it was from another Christopher's mother to another Christopher. Perhaps someone else wrote the letter and pretended to be mother. Chain coming, chain stop, 